Mischief turns into fun when it involves the rascal rodents. We do a lot of shows at Click Divine, so we needed one piece that shows all of our capabilities. We want to wow potential customers by incorporating curved shapes, complex inlays, and advanced storylines. And at the top of the list, we wanted something that was just plain fun. For a project of this magnitude, it's imperative to use the Divine approach, which has four phases. Imagine, design, build, and present. The first phase, imagine, is all about generating ideas. For the surface design, we wanted something very complex. We had just introduced our new flagship collection called the Grand Collection, and it is complex. We're known for blending old world ideas with more contemporary designs. I guess that's part of our love for the great masters. Flipping through our extensive reference library, I discovered an interesting form that might have some possibilities. Then I head off to my designer man cave, grab my trusty sketchbook, and start doodling some ideas. I'm keeping those key design objectives at the top of my mind. Curved shapes, complex inlays, and fun. We got some great ideas at ClickDivine.com and sketched out some drawings. The next phase is design, and that's where we solidify all of our ideas on the computer. The grand collection took three months full time to design, so it provided a great starting point. But even still, each design element had to be broken down and specifically fitted to each of the panel designs. The design is asymmetrical, so the best plan of attack is to draw some guidelines. Then, it's just a matter of putting together one gigantic jigsaw puzzle and seeing what pieces fit best. It took 40 hours, but the basic panel design was finally done. Our design has addressed a couple of core objectives, curved shapes and intricate inlay. Now we go after the fun part, the storyline. Storylines are just like a plot line in a book or a movie. They use character, conflict, and resolution to tell a compelling plot. Here's a good example of a storyline. Going to the virtual gallery at clickdivine.com, we find a piece called Clicker Control. We have a couple of trompe mice that just aren't too happy with what's on the TV. Our characters are the mice. They would prefer a more rodent-friendly program than the musical Cats and they decide to resolve the conflict by seizing control of the clicker and changing the channel to the mouse network. And we're not talking about the Disney Channel here. Now, let's have some fun designing our storyline, keeping character, conflict, and resolution in mind. I'll go with Mice's characters again, and for conflict, I'll do something a little woodworking related. Borrowing an idea from Where's Waldo, I like to hide things in the design and invite the viewer to find them. Then, they really study the details. So after a full two weeks at the computer, we finally have a design that meets our objectives. Alrighty, the time has finally arrived to take a closer look at Rascal Rodents and play the game of Where's Waldo? With Wood. Let's review the storyline. If you recall, advanced storylines have three elements, character, conflict, and resolution. Okay, now the story. Our protagonist, a highly skilled craftsman, was putting clamps on for his final glue up. Released for the night, our antagonists, those pesky rascal rodents, came and stole the clamps. Without clamps, all the glue lets go, causing massive amounts of havoc. Much to the owner's dismay. So it's finally time to uncover all the problems caused by those rascal rodents. Let's get started on the left side. Oh, we see our first problem. A diamond-shaped piece of veneer has fallen out between the fretwork and landed on the medallion. Sliding over to the right a little bit, oh, we see our second problem. A piece of fretwork has fallen and caught itself on the clamp in the medallion. And speaking of medallions, hey, there's our first rascal rodent. Looks like he stole one of our clamps. Moving on down, we see a diamond-shaped piece of veneer is starting to pull away. We also see some fretwork that has fallen and hung itself on the Rococo border. And finally, we see there's a leaf that has fallen between the scrolls and landed safely against the bottom trim. This is a great time to look at all the design considerations we made. 
First, let's look at the black little line that goes all the way around the fretwork. It really sets it apart. Also, look at the use of negative space and how we didn't connect all the top details with the bottom details. This implies structure without adding more elements, thus simplifying an already complex design. Total number of problems on the left side? Five. And turning to the front of our cabinet, we immediately see the big post-it that says leave clamps on, which is the setup for our entire storyline. I've had several people come up to me at shows who thought the blue veneers were actually real pieces of masking tape. They look that lifelike. The note shadow was created by using darker wood species that shared similar figures of their lighter counterparts. Just below the note we see our first problem, a trompe l'oeil veneer peel. Oh, and there's a cherub just sitting back patiently watching the rascals just destroy our cabinet. Thanks for helping out, bud. Seems Mr. Cherub has lost some tape that's holding his toupee in place. Another problem. And he's lost his little mother of pearl wing and it's lodged itself on top of the medallion. Your penance for not helping a cabinet in distress. Oops, here's another one just below the cherub. A trompe l'oeil effect of the fretwork peeling away and revealing the brown substrate. And moving to the center and... Oh, there's another one of those rascal rodents. Notice the design feature of the violin and how it breaks out of the medallion, thus connecting the whole top design back to the center and creating unity. Oh, and the problems keep on coming at you. Here's another piece of veneer that's fallen out, revealing the substrate. Oh, and we see another fretwork pop, but this time it's not a trompe l'oeil illusion, but an actual three-dimensional lift of the door surface. As we move from the cabinets left to right, the trompe l'oeil illusion turns into true three-dimensional reality. And now you can really appreciate how sand shading sells the trompe l'oeil 2D illusion. We have two more 3D effects on the front. A veneer diamond pop, but this time really does pop, and the lower corner peel. By drilling out a hole, we use negative space for functionality. This hole serves as a door handle. Pulling out, we can really see how hard it was to execute an asymmetrical Rococo design. Every single piece was unique. Total number of problems on the front? Eight. Mm, seems like our antagonist rats are winning this battle. I can't bear to find out what's on the right side. Another three-dimensional diamond pop on the top. Oh, and there's another one of my missing clamps. Now I know where it went. And the rascal who stole it. Another 3D surface peel with a hole. And the design element still attached underneath. A missing diamond. Finally, another 3D fret pop. I think that's enough destruction for one cabinet, don't you? So, what was the final tally on this massacre? 17. Oh, and what about the resolution to our rodent story? Well, not only do we find our missing clamps, but it seems Mr. Rodent is sporting a new necklace. The rascals may have won the battle, but they have lost the war. Presentation is the last phase. Normally, this is where we deliver and install our work, but in this case, it's for anyone who wants to have a little bit of fun when they stop by our booth. And the current record time for finding all 17 problems is a couple of 12-year-olds who did it in 54 seconds. Nice job, guys. And Rascal Rodents continues to impress the toughest of the critics. We have an entertaining piece that definitely shows Click Divine's capabilities. If we can create Rascal Rodents, I'm sure our customers will be totally confident when we create their dining room table, their countertop, or their conference room table. I think it would be fair to give Rascal Rodents a wow factor of 10.0. Not quite the rascal anymore, are you?